both are going to be talking about soon, but Navi and I are going to really go for it today. I am so excited about this conversation because Navi is a living proof of what it is uh, possible in um, when it comes to, I believe, is one of the most important things in our lives, which is finding love. And and I love that, um, you know, Navi, it's very easy to look at her now and think, oh, it's just easy for her, um, you know, because look at her, she's now married and, uh, you know, she looks very happy. Uh, so it's easy for her. But the truth is, uh, it hasn't always been easy for Navi. And I would love her to talk a little bit about her story. And, you know, I want to, you know, really um, highlight the fact that I love that, you know, when people become the living proof of what they are helping people with. And Navi is helping high achieving women to find a high value partner. Uh, which is a beautiful mission and so, so important. Hi, Navi, how are you? Let's talk. I'm going to stop talking about it. It's all, the mic is yours. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I hope everybody can hear me properly. Um, thank you so much, Angelica, for the beautiful introduction. And I want to say hello, whosoever is watching us. And if you're watching on a replay, hello. And thank you for watching us. Um if I go back into my story, I have to go back in 2018. And I actually had two regular, like one after the other panic attacks. And I was admitted in mental health unit here in WA Armadale. And one of the day that doctor stopped me from seeing my son, who was one year old that time, and doctor said that we need to have, you know, an assessment on you before we let you see your son. And you can feel that being a mom and you're not able to see your son, like, and even though I felt there were no concerns, but I'm not sure do doctors were concerned. And uh, I'm sitting in uh, this uh, cabin and uh, I'm waiting for to see Dr. Steve, who was the chief psychologist in Armadale Health Unit. I hope he still works there. And I was waiting for him to see me and I'm just sitting and I put my head like this on the chair and I'm just closed my eyes. And I'm seeing this vision where, you know, I'm wearing this beautiful pink dress and I see my son happily playing with a man who is tall and who is laughing. And I am laughing and I'm just like, you know, playing with my dress. And it just did feel so good. Like when I, when I open my eyes and I'm just like, yeah, yeah, I want this. And then I felt that my reality was different. I was married to a man where we were not happy. He was not happy. Uh, we were having continuous fights and I was feeling that I'm not loved. He doesn't see me. I'm, I'm not appreciated. Nobody, like, I'm not loved at all. And when doctor came to see me and he talked to me about like you're having panic attacks do you understand what it's going doing to your body and i told him that i don't want this i i want to be happy and i want to be loved and he said who who is stopping you wow and i really actually started thinking who is stopping me and I got out of his office. I, you know, I passed the examination. I was home. And only when he asked me that who is stopping you, I made a decision in that moment that I am going to change my life. I didn't have any idea how I'm going to do it. I came home. I saw that it, our marriage was not working. I split with my ex-husband. We navigated divorce, childcare, you know, everything. And it was not easy. It was very hard for all of us. It was very hard for my son. It's still hard. 
it's um uh he's still you know sort of navigating this new reality i have created uh and i'm seeing a lot of positive effects on him so it was hard for my ex-husband too because you know he he didn't had very good relationship role model neither me so we were doing what we knew and then you know once you know that what you don't want and then you have to figure out what you want hmm. and i'm very smart i've been very ambitious whole my life but sometimes you know the feeling but you don't know what it looks like and then i started dating and i was experiencing that you know i was attracting this low value men and men were telling me you know they will marry me and if i'm not you know i am i'm not a single mom and my son is on spectrum so that was another challenge i was navigating through and i was very clear that what i didn't want but i didn't know what i wanted and st i started dating i started reading books i started getting coached myself you know i found a coach i started investing in myself and then i met my now husband uh, jordan um it was like it's it's been a fairy tale since he has come in my life uh there was one time when uh, i went on a trip like i used to do a lot of trips with my son just by myself and we were just dating it was very early dating and uh, i actually had a food poisoning and he texted me he said oh how your trip is going i said i'm sick and he said okay do you need help i said you are thousand kilometer away how can you help me he said i will catch a flight and i'll come pick you up and you know i just like i didn't speak for five minutes and he said are you okay i said yes i'm okay then he said okay you don't worry if you need anything i'll call whatever you need tell me i'm coming and picking you up and it was like three months into our dating and i just like it was such a big shock to my system like i have never seen men buying me a bottle of milk for their own son how can this person say oh no i'll catch a flight i'll come mm -hmm. you know and then yes it was for me i had a lot of work to do on myself i had so much trauma which i feel that parts of me are still working through mm -hmm. i had so much wrong relationship role models in my life and how to treat men and how to be a woman i i just had no understanding i read john gray's book that actually changed my perception about relationship and made sure it made me understand that how men and women are different mm -hmm. and how we feel differently loved and look there are always bad women and bad men on this planet For sure. but you have to be learn the skill to have the mindset and to be the person you want to attract that's so key that is so powerful and i think you know even though you were shocked on that day that he said i'm going to come to you you had already changed your energy from within you had already made a decision on what you wanted you already had made a decision uh, into i'm going to work on myself and work through my traumas and i think when we don't do that we keep attracting the same type of relationship so if that's a you know a toxic relationship or if that's a relationship that uh it's not in alignment with what you want or whatever it is you just keep attracting the same you know i, I truly believe that life keeps giving you the same challenges in just different flavor until you make a decision to learn from it and relationship is is in your face is just dead and then right like it's you can't escape from it yeah and you know when when we are being with partner they will also highlight they will mirror our behavior like i feel this is so this is so important to pick that yes that person might be bad but you are attracting that person mm -hmm. so which part of you needs healing mm -hmm. and it is so crazy that every time i see a behavior in my client i see a behavior in myself and they tell me that sort of people they are attracting into life and i see that how you know how, 
how my husband is showing up, how my clients are showing up and how my son is showing up. And I look into myself, okay, where I am being micromanaging, where I am being needy, where I am operating from my wounded feminine. Mm. And yes, we can we can blame all the men on the planet, but where it's going to take us. Yeah. I think what is said in the society these days is that, you know, I have been married for 21 years and the story of my husband and I is like a fairy tale as well. I met him in a hostel. Uh, you know, he was 30, I was 25. You know, he, he, you know, he was traveling around, I was traveling around. No, he didn't really, you know, check, you know, like take all the checklists or anything like that. That, you know, I think a lot of people are looking to, you know, to to check these days. But he definitely checked in into the the the, the kind of the, the kind of priority for me and what attracted me to him, which was he was a, just a genuine good person. He was adventurous. Uh, he was um, uh, honest and true to himself and the way that he spoke to me. And I was attracted by him uh, with that, that he was just truly a genuine person. There was a physical attraction as well. But, you know, for me, it was like, wow, you know, like he just he's he's been authentic by the way that he's living his life. And he wants to to kind of make these connections that are also coming from that place. And I feel that, um, you know, if, of course, there was no online, you know, dating and, and stuff like that. With the whole, the way that the world has changed, I think a lot of people have given up, right, to find love. And they are, you know, what we were talking about just before we went live, you know, there's a lot of women that they have everything. They have like the high power, you know, job or business, the money, the, the, you know, all the things that the money can buy, but they haven't got somebody to share with you know, they, they are life. And I, I personally think that's very, very sad uh, because for me, a bit, I mean, my husband is, is uh, our relationship is just amazing. And there is nothing that I can compare my life with that. Yes. And I would say that it's very sad and it's very triggering too, because what are we teaching our children? Like there is no hope. I feel like there are two reasons that why people are giving up. First of all, that, okay, whatever is happening to you in life, you need to reflect. People find it very hard to see their side of the story. What is what I am doing to attract all these people? And if I don't know what I'm doing, go look for someone who can tell you. Yeah. And yes, you can say, oh, nobody needs a man. We 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 can operate. Like it's it's a very interesting. I know that, like, okay, I'm not dying without my husband, but how good it feels when he helps me with my business, when he says, Okay, honey, you can keep doing your work. I'll go pick up Jeeve. I'll go, uh, you know, do the grocery shopping. Okay, I'll work on your website. How good that feels. And you talked about celebration, like we have. Like if you if you're very successful, who you are celebrating your yeah. stuff with? Strangers, friends who who don't know you, yeah, who who don't know that when you're going to cry and how to support you. And I feel like when I signed up my first client, my uh, he was my date that time. He was not my husband, uh, so he brought a bottle of champagne. And honestly, I wanted to cry because I didn't feel that celebrated in my like ever. And that taught me that I need to celebrate myself. Like, yes, there was work I was doing, but I think sometimes the people in front of you, and especially if you have a partner, they can teach you a lot about you. Yeah. My husband knows more about me than I know about myself. <laughs> Sometimes he tells me, oh, no, because, you know, this is how I was like, how do you know that? And I think what you said, like, you know, there is this movement of women, you know, that thinking, look, I don't need a man. But, you know, I'm sorry to say, but, you know, like we said before, like a vibrator or a Batman or, you know, like an inflatable man is not going to do the job. And, you know, we need to be honest and real about that. You know, we were not made to do life on our own. 
You know, there is this part of us that craves a physical connection. And it's not only about having sex, but it's having the, the space to be intimate, to do nothing together, you know, just to be in each other's energy and company. And like you said, you know, you can't do that with strangers because there isn't that same connection. I've done that and I knew that how it felt. Like I had this, you know, a group of friends and then another group of friends. And honestly, one time I cel celebrated my birthday with strangers, like people who had no idea who I am and people I had no idea who they were. And I feel like uh, we, we find it hard to accept that we are lonely. We miss someone. Because maybe there is so much shame around it because, yes, you are strong, independent, you can date yourself. But I feel like the truth is we're finding it hard and it's painful to see. It was very painful for me to see that I had a lot of work to do. I still have a lot of work to do. I'm always working on myself. And you would agree that every time you are stepping up in your life, there are new challenges. You know, I had to work so much around my money mindset. I, my, I love my dad, but I always had trust issues with him. That's why I found very hard to trust men. And it, it like these triggers come up still. Like I just have to tell myself that no, I'm, I'm going to trust Jordan. The other day, like I was in this appointment, and I knew that I told Jordan that I'm going to be late, and if he can pick up Jeeve. And by the time it was 3 p.m. and I felt like, oh, should I remind him? Should I do this? And then I just said, no, you got to trust. And I remember that once he picked up Jeev and he was feeding him and he sent me a photo of Jeev making funny face. And honestly, I would have called him and I would have showed him that I didn't trust him. And mm. men wants to be trusted. And it can be hard at times. I'm not saying that, you know, they they are perfect no they are not perfect mm. but we are not perfect either <laughs> yes i think what you said is so important and you know like nobody wants to admit that they are uh as a woman that you're highly successful but you're lonely that let's face it and because you have achieved all of this these things and you don't want to admit that you haven't conquered this part of your life but i also think that you know when it comes to working on ourselves, we all have blind spots. And unless we work with somebody, like you're saying, unless you, you know, at the beginning you had to work with people to see those blind spots so you could actually heal those parts of you to attract a man like you have now. And what people have a tendency to do is that, well, I'm going to keep myself comfortable in this place because then I don't have to admit that I'm lonely and that I don't know how to do this. And they keep just doing the same vicious you know, cycle over and over again, because they rather hold on to that pain and that way of being rather than getting out of their comfort zone and doing something different. And we all have a part of our lives that we need help with. Right. And it could be that a high, a high powerful woman has nailed her business and the money and, and, you know, whatever it is, but she can't nail the relationship. So it's a choice that you need to make. Am I going to just be stubborn and stay and holding on to my pain? You know, like we we're talking about, just mirror me up, you know, like just rubbing the pain off every single day. Oh, you know, men don't, you know, are terrible. And is that, or am I going to do something about it? Yeah, and you know, I feel like uh, uh, this is a very important thing I read in Think and uh, Grow Rich uh, by Napoleon Hill that he talks about complainer cannot have money. Okay, <laughs> and I, I, I feel the same that if you just I see these single groups that people are complaining, you know, uh, especially you know women like just sort of like if you don't have you know regulation of your emotion and you want to blame someone you can go on a social media platform and do that and then i see that a lot of other women join i understand you have pain and i totally agree and i understand that they are bad men but that complaining is not getting you anywhere and i do know that we women are not taught to invest in ourselves 
we women are taught to you know be at the last person to have food but we have to change this and yeah. You know, when I go up all these uh, uh, platforms and uh, I talk about feminine energy and people think, oh, I'm asking them to become doormat. And I feel like it's total opposite. Yeah. I feel so powerful. Like, I feel that I have so much influence on my husband just when I'm expressing my emotions. And I'm just telling how I feel. I tell him that I feel tired. He'll say, okay, don't worry about this. I'll take care of that. And... Men are wired, most high value men who are healthy, they are wired to take care. Mm. It's a psychology of evolution where man is a leader and man is an initiator. Mm. And if you think that, okay, you can go one night stand, have, and then, you know, this is how you're going to find love. You're fighting biology and psychology at the same time. Yeah. I think that what you said, yeah, I've I've always kind of because I grew up and you probably that resonates with you in a culture where uh you know women was just hoping for the men to ask them to get married and you know they needed to be, you know, ideally, you know, 20 years ago virgin before they got married. And there was this like submissive energy um, you know, between men and women where women had to behave, behave in a certain way so they could attract a man that would be, you know, paying for their lifestyle and, you know, a, a man that had a financial freedom and all of that. And I remember looking at this kind of dynamics in my own culture thinking that is not feminine energy, right? Like that, let's just clarify that that's not feminine, being submissive, you know, being, um, you know, just waiting and hoping and giving your power away. You know, I grew up in a household where my mom and my dad, they were like, they always loved each other. They uh, always wanted to be in each other's energy. Uh, but my mom is a strong woman. You know, she wouldn't, um, you know, accept any crap from my dad. You know, that's the only way I can, you know, I can say. But she was also happy for him to do a lot of things for her. You know, and I and I as I grew up in that environment, for me, it has never been uh, difficult to uh, to kind of tap into this feminine energy and and not try to become a man. I don't want to be a man. I'm actually very happy being a woman and and you know doing the things that I do and look after my husband and doing things for him and having him stepping up and doing things for me. Yes, and Look, I, I run a very successful business and I'm I'm working the very, very long hours I work. OK, and. And once you, when you start a business, you upgrade a lot. And before that, I've done this feminine, masculine energy work, and this has already upgraded. Now I feel like I I have better skills to say what I want, what I need. And without being in a demanding energy. Yeah. And without, I feel like I feel so powerful that, okay, I can be just totally honest and I can say uh, to my husband, love, this doesn't work for me. Mm. Rather than saying that, oh, you did this and I yeah. like, you know, Brene Brown says that when we are upset and we are stressed, we just want to find somebody to blame. Yeah. Yeah. And look, I feel like we, we are different. OK, and there is nothing you can do about it. We are women and we have a different sort of body yes. and we will we will get treated differently at different times. But there is so much advantage to that. Being I, women. I can get into rooms being a woman where a man cannot get. Yeah. You know, I, I can like, you know, nobody will look at me and say, oh, she. Oh, yeah. You know, why can't he, she do herself? I feel that when I when I'm traveling, I'm on airports. I've been offered men will carry my luggage, and they say, "Oh, can I please help you?" I said, "Yes, please, of course." Yeah. And and I feel like that if uh, you know if you're saying that you are too independent, that is a traumatic response. Yeah, because that is a response coming from where you didn't look felt looked after by your dad. Yeah. You didn't feel supported. And that's why yes, this hyper independent is is a traumatic 
response because you don't trust that you can be taken care of and you deserve that. Yeah. Like this is this deservingness. This is the big, it was big for me. Yeah. I took like, I took months to tap into that. I deserve it. I, I deserve it. And it's okay for a man to buy me flowers. It's okay for man to buy me a diamond ring. I was never able to afford. It's okay. Mm. And it's okay for me to ask for what I need. Mm. And I feel that when, you know, women expect men to do certain things without sharing, some men can like, some men can be very smart. Like, I feel like my husband ha is very smart because he's raised by a wonderful mom. Okay. Mm. But not all men have that experience. Mm. So they are not mind readers. If you want something, if you're thirsty on a date, just tell him and see if he is, a, he is a masculine man. He would say, honey, what can I find you to drink? What would feel good? I see that all the time. I, I, I'm I, just like, okay, I'm just sharing. And my husband was like, okay, what can I do it? Because they are basically problem solvers. Mm. And I feel like it's it's very much okay for women to acknowledge that part of men where they want to give. And if you want, if you, if you find it hard to receive, there is some work you need to do on yourself. That is so crucial. Like this whole idea that you can receive um that you can put yourself first that you can put your needs first that you can invest on yourself i also went through you know in my journey around that and i think that uh i see that a lot in women these days as well that you know is either one or the other expectation they keep attracting these toxic relationships where they get nothing or they are completely the opposite spectrum where they're like you know, I don't need a man and, you know, and if I do have a man, you know, and then they go the checklist, right? He's got to have this, he's got to have that, you know, like in a way that it becomes so um, mechanical and so like not as spontaneous. And if I was a man and I got involved with a woman like that, I'll be like, I'm out of here. I'm, I'm not, a, you know, a business case here, you know, like, and I feel like, we as a society as well, and it could be potentially because of these online interactions that we have now, we have lost this ability to truly connect with people in a spontaneous. I like, I, I love being in, sp in spontaneous. I'm from Brazil. My husband is English. So, you know, English needs, you know, they're kind of open. Sure. And, then, and then I'm like, whatever, you know, like, let's just do this. You know, like I hate, you know, I really hate when people say like, oh, can I meet you on the 23rd of September? And I'll be like, nah, I don't show what I'm going to be, how I'm going to feel like, nah, you know, like I, so I feel like, you know, to, to hold space for love and connection, we need to go back to being a little bit more spontaneous. What do you think about that? Look, it's, it's, it's very individual. And I want to talk about the checklist. OK, I want to tell you a st little story here. So this uh, client of mine, she's beautiful, amazing. OK, she is very rich, like very, very rich. And she has few restaurants and she she runs a restaurant cha chain. OK, so she uh, she has, uh, you know, every time she was coming on the call and she was asking, OK, how can I find a rich guy? And I said, OK, uh, so it was very interesting for me. OK what that rich guy looks like and she says okay you know who can pay for me who can i said you've got a lot of money and she says yes and i said okay that's that's not a problem and then down the line we figure out that she doesn't trust herself with the money she has been very overly generous to people around uh you know she has these bad boundaries around people and the this rich guy thing was not coming from a money perspective it was coming from not feeling safe in their own space and when you have a checklist the person you're going to meet is also has a checklist i know you know so it's i know how brutal it sounds but this is the truth okay yeah. if uh you know uh look i am i feel like i've i've lost so much weight after just doing the work and i look beautiful than ever what i used to be and me and my husband 
met when we were very imperfect. He was dealing with some sort of mess. I was dealing some sort of mess. But how we showed up, we yeah. made a yeah. choice to show up in a healthy way. And I, that's the choice I make every day. And I yeah. feel like that's the choice he makes every day. Like we we are imperfect. And yes, he is he's tall, he's handsome, but he's got a beer belly, and that's okay. I find it very turn turning on. I find it very sexy and he laughs. <laughs> so it's because I feel like I see his imperfections and I find them that how how happy they make me. Like, you know, there are times when he's quite busy because you know, when he's focused, he's so focused. He forgets about dinners, he and like I'm, I'm very tuned with my body. I, it's easy for me to say, oh, I'm hungry. I need food, you know, uh, or I need to meditate or something. Men are differently wired. And I feel like this is so basic that we need to understand there is no need to compete with them. Yeah. Why can't we receive their support and, you know, thrive in our life? Yeah. Yeah, I think that... Um... The world has shifted so much, but fundamentally, uh, our inner feelings is still the same. We're coming from a wounded place trying to fix this balance between men and women when we're never going to fix it like that. There is a, a TED talk from a lady who I interview, which is a very powerful one, and the name her name is Abby Haverman. I don't know the name of the TED talk right now. Mm -hmm. And she talks basically about this, you know, um, idea that feminism come from inside. So it's not about, you know, she also went through a toxic relationship and, you know, they broke up and she realized she, she was doing everything she could to still fit the norm of society. I'm married, you know, I have a child, even though my, you know, the person I'm with is not in alignment. And, you know, and she went to... Um, uh, to as a psychologist to court to see why girls were sending pictures of themselves who were teenagers naked to boys and when the judge asked the boys and the girls the answer was very simplistic the boys went like I don't know I just wanted to see her naked and the girls were like oh, I just wanted him to like me mm. and you see like and that's like now, right? Like that that's not 20 years ago. That is still happening now. And I think that as long as we keep behaving in that way, either the competition and being the extreme or the submission and putting up with toxic relationships, we're just going to raise another generation because our daughters are watching us. They, yes. You can say whatever you want, but our daughters are watching us. I am very confident that my daughter is watching me and she's going to become a mini me, right? Because she knows how I interact with her dad. She knows how our relationship is and my son the same, you know? So this idea that, you know, how, what's the next generation going to become if we, we're not modeling healthy and loving connections to our children, yeah, this is so true. And I want to just highlight what you said, because it just hit me so hard that girl said, I wanted him to like me. Okay, because she has seen that mom wanted dads or boyfriends to like her. Mm. Whereas we don't need somebody to like us. We are enough in our way. And when you it's hard to feel it, it it requires a lot of work but once you tap into your enoughness people who see you as enough and people who feel enough in themselves will show up in their your life and i could like i could go back and see my journey from my dating journey from 2019 to meeting my husband when did you after that so I actually started this work in 2020. But as you know, I am I'm a savage. I just when when I'm on a mission, like I had an Excel sheet for dates. Like I was like, okay. And the one thing that really helped, yes, I was going on dates and I was always paying attention that how I was feeling, what was I genuine? Was I authentic? What did I say? What I wanted to say? How did I show up? And I kept on working on myself like, 
you know, nearly uh, uh, if you look back in the, the thing, I have like thousand books, which I have read. And I love that. And I love I, I'm still working on myself. Yes, we are married. We are very happy. But I'm always like looking for to achieve, you know, more like achieve looks very masculine word, but just be more connected to my husband. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, now uh, initially we had a separate vision, like he had his own vision. I had my own vision. Now we have a combined vision. You know, his like I feel like the other day I was just posting that how, you know, he's been working so hard on the website and he was so admitted. He said, no, I'm going to do it. I want to do it. And he has a full time job. And then I feel like he's making my dreams his dreams. And that feels so good. Like yeah. I was telling him yesterday that I didn't ever feel that, you know, anybody else said to me, OK, you want to do it? You can do it. Like even my own family, like my parents, my mom, my sister, that anytime I have an idea, they just said, oh, you're just going to mess up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I feel that. And I was not aware enough to say and show them that I'm enough and I don't need anybody's validation. And not to be liked and not run after that like that, OK, somebody has to validate me like. Mm. Honestly, you can, it's your body. You can do whatever the hell you want with your body. I totally, I don't judge you. But if I am doing something, living out of my values, and this happens a lot, and especially when once uh, women start dating, and I, I, I have this another beautiful woman, like she started dating this guy, and this is feeling so great. And I see that she's living out her values. You know, mm -hmm. saying yes to every last minute date, saying yes to meeting him five days a week. Like that's that's like unhealthy. That's very unhealthy because the sooner and the faster he's coming. The worst way he's going to crash because yeah. we are looking to have a sustainable relationship and relationships are not like they're not just going up like that's that's toxic, which is like up, 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 up. There has to be like, you know, some flow. And I love that. I love what you said there because I think that, you know, and I, I love what you said about the spreadsheet and stuff. You know, when we want something in life, if we don't go all in, we're just not going to get it. Let's face it. You know, it's like people, they spreadsheet is the same thing like, oh, I'm just going to sit here and wait for to get healthy. No, no. If you want to get healthy, right, you need to exercise every day you need to think about what you're going to eat you need to buy the right groceries you need to and it's the same thing people are waiting for the love of their lives to knock on their doors and go hi love you know this perfect checklist man you know tick 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 you know and and there is a lot of talks you probably know that in, on social media about that oh manifest the man of your you know i remember i was in this group like this it was just for women and, you know, this woman had gotten divorced and she was talking about this, like, you know, um, you know, the energy, if you do this, you're just going to attract, you know, but she hadn't attracted yet another man. But she was talking about, and I'm like, how, how do women fall into like that kind of crap if that person doesn't even have the result that she's saying that she will? You know, you manifestation is much more than just sitting there and just, you know, oh, I want to get healthy. I want to, uh, you know, I want to make money and start my business. And I, oh, I want to find the love of my life. That's that's not what manifestation is about. It is very funny because uh, the other day I was listening to uh, Leila Harmozy and she was saying that she, the manifestation is great, but manifestation without a plan is just a bluff. And she's like, honestly, I was so impacted by that, listening to just that. I, you know, I have my own business goals. I have some fitness goals and I've removed the visions. Yeah. Now I have the plan. Like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to drink three liters of water every day. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to exercise no matter what. So we need a plan. And I know that I hear many times women saying like, I think it's, it's very very interesting approach. Oh, when the time is right, when the stars are aligned, my man is going to show up. No, your man is not going to show up. Like you're being lazy, sitting on the couch and not going out on dates. Yeah. It's like, 
how he's going to show up like is he going to fall from the sky i think jordan didn't fall i had to still go on tinder uh, make a dating profile put some bio in you know i have had like many bad dates like not uh, i won't say them bad dates but i met other quality men too on tinder and i know that how tinder comes across oh yeah it's a sort of a, it's a hook up side it took us like 19 min 19 months to hook up actually Well when you told me that I was like oh my god no how did she do that even I even I was like oh my god how did she do that that was like extra It was hard it was hard but the thing was because I was so determined look for me uh, it's just a personal opinion and I don't want people to do that if that that doesn't feel aligned to them for me my body is sacred for me I I wanted a man to earn me and i feel like it helped me to deselect people who were not my person who was like yes sex is amazing you know it's it's beautiful it it connects you deeply but at the same time sharing that with different people you are collecting baggage and it's been found in study that the amount number of partners you have look i'm not i'm not judging anybody and i'm i i just want to apologize if somebody feels like that but if you don't value yourself like if you are you know just going out with people and just not even knowing who they are and just being intimate with them do you do you think like i wouldn't think that that person values their body i i agree with that and we speak to our kids they're only 12 and 2 and 10 sorry a lot about that you know that you are exchanging energy when you are having sex with people we you know it's something that is sacred right and um from my own personal experience when i was young and you know i was a bit lost and and disconnected um i wouldn't want my daughter to do that because i feel like um you know that whole a mix of energy is very real in your body when you're starting collecting people's energy that you actually don't want to be collecting and and I think I I actually get really admire you for you know having made uh, Jordan to wait for 19 months <laughs> it was it was hard for me too like I am I I'm, I'm very I'm so connected to my body I have so much sexual energy the thing is because I was so determined that I I was a yeah. single mother. I had a son who had a heartbreak because his dad mm-hmm. stopped seeing him. Like it was not only about me, it was also about that what I'm teaching my son too. Like okay, I I bring this man home and tomorrow he disappears and yes, and also like I would say that I had my legitimate fears, but those fears helped me to make a better decision that okay i wanted to know that jordan was there for a long run and all these times i was i told him clearly i said look i'm i'm on a journey and i want to find the best partner i can have and if you don't make a decision by that time then i'm going to stop dating and that was so powerful and i know that he he tells me many times that you know uh sometimes you look like oh you are very easy and sometimes i feel just pa- your power like your presence and i know that his uh, you know initially his friend used, used to think that oh i he found this indian doormat women and now they see me totally different and they see oh yeah you are you are something yeah <laughs> and it's look it i you know uh it doesn't matter what you wear you made a black suit or you wore a black dress your power comes from here you mm. from your self trust it doesn't come from what you wear or you know who you When, are yeah. and it it comes from within and that comes sees in your interaction and i feel that women who are being badly treated by men i would say that they need to tap into their power for sure. Yeah. And I think, you know, if women that are listen to this they are scared, obviously you are their person. Um I would say please contact me V. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> But I think that 
the most important thing here is to ask yourself, you know, how much do you actually want this? Because finding a partner is the same as, you know, starting a business, getting healthy again. You know, if you don't really want and intentionally have a plan and put some steps in place every single day, and I would say work with somebody who can see your blind spots, um, it will be very difficult for you to break a cycle that it's, you know, attracting toxic relationships. It would be very difficult. You only have to ask yourself, how long have I been in this cycle? And yes, as you know, a lot of women have been dead since they were teenagers. Yes. Right? Yeah. And the other thing is, it also comes back to being okay with seeking help. Yeah. Being okay to receive help and being okay that, yes, I don't have to do it all alone. I can seek mm. help. And also feeling that, yes, I deserve to be helped. I deserve that investment. And same with the business. And I, you know, one day I put a post that how I found that business and dating is same. Same. When, you know, and also like, you know, you, you teach people how to, you know, how to tell their stories. Yeah. And I feel like if somebody doesn't know your story, it is hard for them to connect with you. Yeah. And that's in business, that's big game changer. And I feel like when when you're happy, you are I feel like since me and Jordan have met since we, you know, he he decided to put a ring on my finger. I feel like life has folded up like it's it's abundant. Mm -hmm. I spend so much money on my my myself. Uh, you know, we have cars. We uh, we have this beautiful wedding, and I see that I feel like I look back and I feel that, wow, Jordan, well done on us. How much we have achieved? Like, we bought a house. We did a big wedding. That you know, we went for a big honeymoon to Maldives. We 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 uh, our business is doing well. We have bought new two cars. Like. This is abundant, like, and I feel like for me, it all comes that I'm happy. I feel safe in my home and I, I'm and supported. You, yeah, and I think what you said is so beautiful, like building a life together. When I met my husband, you know, like he, he, like I said, he was just traveling around Europe, lost, you know, like, and I was just working in Belgium and we dated for a year before I moved into the UK and we build a life in England, we build another life in New Zealand, another life here. And we have always kind of back each other up on our goals and projects and dreams. But like I said, you know, a relationship is a continuous like working progress. Like if you leave, if you think like, oh, okay, well, I'm not going and I just want a perfect man and then I don't need to do any work. You know, that's already the wrong mentality, right? Like we've, been together for like 21 years now like we've moved countries together we've had two kids together we've got a dog together which was almost harder than getting the kids like you've got you know <laughs> you know like you know i went through cancer i mean there was so there's so much that we have done together but if you don't have that this this um feeling inside of you i want to build something together with somebody you know i just want this 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 and that you know, there is so much disconnection there. Do you feel that this is a big problem as well? Look, um, I talk about that uh, when people are like I have had I've seen women that they find it even very hard to share a room with another woman. OK, and I remember my coach telling me that, Navi, can you make some space in your wardrobe for your husband? Yes. You know, and I it was it it felt like okay i have to share even when we moved in together like it was oh yeah okay now he can he get we are sharing a bedroom and i had so many intimacy fears and i feel like we women all have that but there is so much love passion and connection just navigating those fears like being okay to be seen being okay mm -hmm. to be heard and being okay with your imperfections because i feel like uh this intimacy fears comes from where we didn't feel safe we didn't mm -hmm. safe feel safe with our parents we didn't feel safe with our previous relationships but you will feel safe 
with the man who is aligned, who have you really gotten to know before making big decisions. And I feel like I always look at my husband that uh, many times he shows me that, okay, you know, I was talking about this car and uh, I never had a, a, you know, brand new car. I always uh, just had a secondhand cars. And he said, Navi, uh, you know, I have this car. I want you to, ch uh, you know, we need to upgrade your car too. And let's buy an SUV. And I said, okay. You know, I had so much triggers just yeah. around like I had to work my story and he said do you have like he's asked me that do we have any financial issues I said no and he said then what hmm. and he I know that he pat my back and he said I want my wife to have a new car like I, I don't want you to drive the same car again and for me yes there is a part of me that doesn't really value like you know big cars and big stuff but then I felt that it was more of me like, oh, am I, do I deserve this? Yeah. Can, can I, can I have it? And oh, like this all plays up. Like it's how you do one thing. Yes. That's the way you do everything. Yeah. And what do you say? You know, if you keep, you know, the, once you make that decision, yes, I am going to focus on this part of my life because I want to sort this part of my life. And I'm going to put an effort in time, in money, in investment, and I'm going to be vulnerable. I'm going to lean into my pain and lean into my vulnerabilities. And your energy starts shifting. You start seeing change in your life. You know, it, it, it all, all everything opens up for you. It's not that you're going to go from, you know, from zero to being perfect, but it starts open up and you you heal layers and layers and layers and layers. And, you know, when you think like, I've healed everything, another layer, another challenge, another layer, another challenge. But you have the, the most important and challenging step is that first step. It's just going, I can't figure this out on my own. I'm sick of being lonely. I don't want to do life on my own anymore. And, and I'm just going to do something about it. And I'm going to do it now. Right? It is. And, you know, there is so much fun and so yes. much love in the process. Like, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm going to come back to again, uh, Lala Hermosi. She was fighting in this, uh, you know, body uh, uh, bikini competition. And she said that once when she received the trophy, she didn't feel anything. But mm -hmm. the fun she had like okay she had to cut down on her calories she had to do business and fitness at the same time and how much growth she had and I do feel the same like I love the women I became in my dating process I love the women I am becoming in my business like business has different sort of work like you know I I, I really I'm working on my uh, you know ha uh, helping with uh, women with trauma Mm -hmm. And I had to upgrade myself. I have to go read books. I have to go get myself coached and to support my people even better way. And it, there is so much beauty. I feel like, I don't know, how can you miss so much yumminess of life just yes. sitting on the fence? I love that. So now how can people reach out to you? There is only one Navi Sparkle on this planet. Find me on Instagram, Navi Sparkle Coach. Find me on Facebook, Navi Sparkle. Go on my website, www.navisparkle.com. And yes, you can like this video. You can share this video. And I would love to give you a gift. I have a free webinar where I reveal my three steps long lasting love formula. If anybody wants to grab they can comment on this post, the word love, and I will send you that directly. Awesome. Awesome. So I'll share um, your handles as well. But thank you so much for sharing your story. I think it's, you know, for me, I always look up to people that are the living proof of what they're trying to teach because I feel it's so important for you to be the example, really, like of what's possible, you know, and people can see that, you know, you went from, you know, a relationship that was completely misaligned to finding, you know, true love. And, you know, you've got your son as well. And, you know, you've just created this beautiful life for yourself. And I, I really love that. Thank you. And I I am very fortunate and blessed to have friends like you and people like you. We 
with whom I'm growing and sharing my journey. Awesome. Thank you so much, beautiful. Thank you.